Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is an introduction to IP version 6. Now we really focused on IP version 4 in the ICND1 material and now it's time that we, we have to move on to what is soon going to be the most widespread version of IP and that's version 6. But don't worry, for nearly each difference that we encounter with version 6, we can probably find maybe one similarity to version 4. So you don't have to throw out all of your knowledge. And again, you're still going to encounter version 4 for quite some time. But we do need to know version 6. Okay, so let's get started. Version 6 addresses, IPv6, they are registered with ICANN, just like the version 4 addresses. And again, the primary reason for moving to version 6 was quite simply IP version 4, those addresses were exhausted. We just ran out. So with v4, we have about 2 to the power of 32 addresses. That's a little over 4 billion IP addresses. It's kind of hard to believe that they're all used up. With IP version 6, it's 2 to the 128th power. Significantly larger. We get a ton more addresses with IP version 6. Now, even though IP version 4 and IP version 6, they're both IP, Internet Protocol, these are not interoperable. In other words, these are different protocols. They're different versions of IP. So they do not work together. They are separate. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the features and improvements that we get by using IP version 6. First, let's talk about the new IP headers in version 6. Quite simply, they are smaller than what we had in version 4. And that means they're more efficient. Because we have less information inside the IP version 6 header, it means less processing power is required from the router every time it receives a packet. Because it, it has to go ahead and parse that packet and go through all the information in there in order to figure out what to do. Well, if there's less information to go through, there's less resource demand on the router itself. And this is really good because it's going to result in faster lookups in the IP route tables. So we're going to get an improvement enhancement as well. Now, we can add information to this IP packet through something known as an extension. And essentially, these are just fields that we can add or remove from the IP version 6 header, depending on our needs. So in a way, this new header is customizable. Now, it's because the IP version 6 headers are so different than the version 4 headers that the two protocols are not interoperable. Okay, so that's the first thing, new headers. Then the address size itself. With IP version 4, those were 32 bit address lengths. IP version 6, they're four times as big, 128 bits long. Now here's some really good news. We no longer have to use NAT and PAT with IP version 6. Now remember, these tools were originally developed in order to help extend the availability of the IP version 4 address space. Well, because IP version 6 gives us so many addresses that, quite simply, we just don't need these tools anymore. We no longer will run into the problem of running out of IP uh, version 6 addresses. And this is really welcome news. This is, this is great because while Nat and Pat helped us extend the lifespan of version 4, they also introduced a lot of complexity and also some problems as well. So getting away from these guys is welcomed. And here's something else we no longer have to worry about, the broadcast packet. IP version 6 does not support broadcast packets. So this is great news as well because we no longer have to worry about those broadcast storms, you know, the endless loops of traffic that can bring down a network. Well, instead, IP version 6 uses multicast packets to achieve the same purpose. And the other types of traffic, like unicast, that's still supported. And there's even a new type of traffic called the anycast. We're going to learn about the different traffic types in a dedicated tutorial, but for now, just welcome this good news, no more broadcast packets. Now, if you've watched the VPN tutorials, then you're already familiar with IPsec. Well, IP security is required on a host if you're going to run IP version 6. Now, you don't have to use it. You can turn it on or you can turn it off, but the requirement to support it is there. And that's because IPsec was originally developed for IP version 6, but they also made it available for IP version 4 as well. 
So quite simply, the uh, the coupling or the integration of IPsec and IP version 6 is much tighter than what you would find between IPsec and IP version 4. Now another big change with IP version 6 is address aggregation. So with IP version 6, because the length of the address is so much bigger than what we had in version 4, we actually get a lot more benefits when it comes to aggregating addresses. So quite simply, we get better aggregation with IP version 6. This is going to lead to more efficient route tables because we don't have to have as many routes, as many individual routes listed in our tables. This is a good thing. It's going to, again, improve performance on the network. Also, we no longer have to worry about fragmentation. You remember when a packet was received and it was too big for the MTU and it would have to be chopped up into smaller pieces? That no longer exists with IP version 6. Because IP version 6 will be able to determine the path MTU before any packets are sent. So there, there's really no reason for fragmentation to ever occur because the router is going to know beforehand the largest MTU that is supported on the path all the way to the destination. Now, if for some reason a packet is received and it does exceed the MTU, with IP version 6, that packet is just dropped. No fragmentation occurs. Okay, so those are some of the key features and differences introduced by IP version 6. Let's go ahead and wrap up this tutorial with a brief look at how addresses are assigned. In the beginning, we mentioned that ICANN holds all of the IP version 6 addresses. Well, in order for us to get an IP version 6 address, first ICANN assigns them to what are called Regional Internet Registries, or RIRs. If you heard of Aaron before, Aaron is an example of an RIR. So ICANN gives a big block to Aaron, and then Aaron is going to go ahead and divide up that block into smaller blocks and give them to ISPs. Once the ISP has a block, it will then further divide it up into smaller blocks for all of its customers. And then once a customer has a block, which is often just referred to as a site prefix, well then that customer can go ahead and subnet it and break it up into smaller ones. So that's the most common way that an end user gets an IP version 6 address assignment. There's also a way that a customer can appeal directly to Aaron in order to get their own IP addresses. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that with IP version 6, we get some new headers. And that's really why uh, IP version 6 is not interoperable with IP version 4, because the headers are different. With IP version 6, they're smaller and they're customizable. Another big difference between version 4 and version 6 is the address size. Now, along with IP version 6, we get a lot of benefits. We no longer have to use NAT and PAT, and we no longer have to support the broadcast address. These are good things. Now, IPsec is tightly integrated with IP version 6, and hosts using IP version 6 have to be able to support it. A big benefit of using IP version 6 is that we get better aggregation capabilities, which is going to lead to more efficient routing, and fragmentation no longer exists with IP version 6. Instead, hosts can go ahead and figure out the path MTU before a single packet is even sent. Okay, and then finally we took a brief look at how an end user ends up getting an address allocation all the way from ICANN through the registries to the ISPs and finally to the end user. Okay, so that's it. That is the introduction to IP version 6. Thanks for watching.